Hello everyone. Thank you very much for the invitation. It's an honor for me to stay with all you, especially doctors from Egypt and around the world. I'm Dr. Arias. I'm coming from Bolivia. I work in two countries, Bolivia and South America. I'd like to talk part of my experience. I want to talk about treatment of varicose ulcers. Uh, first of all, I'd like to make an introduction with uh, the concept and uh, some information about, in general, how it uh, pH works. We know that the pH is a measure of the concentration of hydrogens. It's measurement at a logarithmic scale with the range 0 till 14. The concentration of hydrogen is different fluids in the organism is critical science. Small changes, it can alter the balance of chemical reactions. A pH of 7 considered neutral in the concentration of hydrogen. Increase the pH is lower than 7 is called acid. And the concentration decreases pH with a higher than 7 and will be concentrated basic. In the body are different systems, scale buffer, that stabilize the tissue pH among the proteins which blind and release hydrogen ions so that balance maintain the natural pH of the skin. Many people think it's 7, but the point is 4.5 till 5. So in this scale, we make uh, different tests. We work in, in this pH studies about uh, 15 years already. And that's one of the studies we did. The maintenance of pH is essential to receive the balance of the cutaneous flora and avoid the proliferation of pathogen gels, soaps, and cosmetics. The term neutral pH is used to refer to its pH approaching the physiological level of the skin, which can lead to error. This patient has a varicose ulcers over 30 years, has a different kind of treatment with sulfas, with cramps and different topical substances, and tried to cover, but it was very, very uh, bad, and he was programmed for an amputation. This is the second leg. There are two legs with this condition, and I want to talk how the pH influence on the healing process needs to be developed in an appropriate microenvironment influenced by different intrinsic and extrinsic factors. Among the first, the pH in which depend the essential functions such as oxygen release, angiogenesis, protease activity, and bacterial toxicity. The release of oxygen. It, is, it depends not only on perfusion but also on diffusion to promote the healing of a chronic ulcer. It is essential that a tissue tension if O2 or PO2 is high of 40 millimeters of mercury, decrease pH on 0.9 units, increase oxygen diffusion by five times. The proteinases are enzymes that destroy the cell matrix of the growth factors essential for healing. These enzymes have maximum activity with neutral of alkaline pH depending on the protein increase. The enzymes are produced by the one itself, but also by the bacteria found it. Currently also found in drugs for viral and bacterial inhibition in wounds. On other hand, bacteria also produce ammonium from the action on urease and urea with the consequent toxicity and alkalization of the environment. The presence of bacteria taking pH value above 8 or 9. What's the optimal pH for healing? Studies that have measured the pH chronic ones have detected range between 7.5 till 8 or 9. It was been shown that ones are more alkaline pH have lower cure rates than with a pH close to 7. When the healing process begins to process properly, the pH becomes neutral and later acid is thought that the pH does not depend on the, on the deep of the wound, but on the type of tissue that exists in bed. pH control in wound's evolution in granulation tissue and scar tissue generator. It's the same patient a couple of uh, months after treatment just with pH control, elastocompression, and we do, in this case, also forms sclerotherapy and therapeutic exercises walking. What's the interest of pH in our clinical practice? It has been shown that the occlusion of one reduces the loss of carbon dioxide, 
which prevents an alkalosis from occurring in the bed studies have been con conducted with different bioactive designs that confirm that they decrease the pH of the wound. pH controlling wounds evolution in granulation tissue and scar tissue generator. This pH control band, we, we use the same, the, we can find where they use for water, pH water control. So in regular stores, that is not a medical supply. Maybe later they can uh, have for uh, medical doctors. This we use it just for con water control, but it works very well. Just put the data and the take picture so to make, uh, uh, we can uh, register how is the evolution. This is a 74 years old family patient presents multiple ulcer in lower limb, starts treatment with presence of infected tissue in pH between nine or 10. This case is evolution just with pH control and elastic compression. And it is very, very helpful. This is another case, 58 years old female patient, presents ulcer with lower limb, start treatment with infected tissue, pH between nine to 19, 10. This is another case. We have many, many cases of documentation with this case. The pH control record in the ulcer vent is determined by the treatment used and promoted healing. And I like to show you the second is very fast. It's 190 pictures. Every picture is one second. I like to please ask you to put attention because it's very fast. And this is the evolution just with pH control and compression. This patient is was uh, programmed for having amputation, and we start to do our study, clinical study with registration exactly. Every every office visit, we make the same type. We change the pH with different soaps when we need to have alkaline or neutral or acid. Elastic compression, just cleaning with. Uh, first of all, we do a sulfur soap and uh, water and uh, just alcohol and uh, isodine. And we do control pH when we need the uh, alkaline, let's say, a little bit, we use sometimes uh, Vaseline and uh, elastic compression, multi-cap, and this is the process. This patient was programmed for amputation in four months in four months, we're recovering almost 100% of the leg. We're still working, we don't have finished pictures. Uh, maybe in next two, three months, we're gonna have the completely rehabilitation from this patient, just with this study from pH control. It is very important to do, they have cleaned the, the leg and we, uh, we ask the patient walk daily. If you see the skin of the feet, it, it was for, first of all, very dark. It was looking like an old shoe, but with the time, with the control, with the irrigation, it's recovering almost 100% the quality of the skin in the foot. So it is very, very uh, interesting also it helps very good, uh, not only in the condition or pain, also in the psychological condition of the patient, uh, start to uh, less pain, feel optimist, like to live, like to come, like to talk. And it works very, very good when we do very, we do completely cure with the patient. We know that patient is a person. They had feelings, they had uh, pain, they have a uh, mentality, uh, depression sometimes, and we have to work completely with the patient. This case is very, very important for me because I uh, still working, uh, maybe next time I can show you the final results from this patient, but I'm 100% sure that we can, uh, we're gonna be very su successful. If you have any questions. Yeah, thank you very much, uh, uh, Professor Arias for uh, great cases. Uh, I have a question for you regarding the uh, cases uh, of venous ulcers uh, to which you offer treatment with compression along with pH change, yes? Uh, first of all, for, for uh, uh, varicose veins, 
we do like uh, everyone from sclerotherapy, elastocompression, and therapeutic exercises. In patients with varicose ulcers, we have not only pH control. pH control is a tool to help us. We use also another technique, the name is microcurrents. We use some, uh, tens and uh, to the ulcers. They take impulse to activate the mitochondria. We do also uh, elastocompression. We do therapeutic exercises. And uh, in some cases, nutritional orientation also and psychological attention. Our clinical is specialized in phlebology, lymphology, and physical rehabilitation. So we do, uh, we have a lot of patients with lymphedema, a lot of patients with varicose ulcers, and also with, uh, of obviously, uh, varicose veins. Yeah, this is my question. So long you are treating the patient with so many modalities, how can uh -huh. you be sure that the BH control could improve, could enhance the healing process, so long you are treating with so many modalities? Yeah, it is easy. We have to have all patients test from pH. When it's over five, we have to lower. When it's under, we can to give up. But we have to have all varicose uh, uh, ulcers patients have to have pH control. Uh, compression, yes. But when, when it's alkaline, we have a protocol to acidify the yeah. ulcer. When it's too acid, we have a protocol to put alkaline ice. Yeah. So it is, it is a very important tool mm. to have in all varicose ulcer patients. Okay. So uh, what's your experience uh, regarding the use of uh, negative pressure wound therapy in the treatment of venous ulcers? Excuse me? The use of negative pressure wound therapy in the treatment of venous ulcers. Well, uh, I don't use personally but in my opinion, I can tell you what I do. I do elastic compression, therapeutic exercises, and control about maybe some, if it's infected, we can use antibiotics, oral injection, or sometimes topics, that it depends. But uh, that is my, my technique, my experience. I work since 93 in this area. Yeah, great. So uh, the floor is open for discussion. Dr. Ayman Salim, please. Uh, uh, do you recommend a certain pH for proper healing of the uh, wound? 9 to 10, yes? Yes, 100%. Yes. How can you... Not 9 to 10. The, the point for, for healing is 4.5 till 5. 4.5 4. Yes. 4. to 5, yes. 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 Uh, how can you adjust this by dressing? Uh, first of all, when we wash the wound, we use different soaps. They are soap, they can make alkalinize or can acidify and support. When it's too acid, we use Vaseline with, uh, uh, it's, it's kind of, uh, Zifosina, Zifosin in spray. Yeah. Uh, on the over the wound and Vaseline, guys with Vaseline cover yes. and multi cup, three cups. One is uh, smooth. Yes, the how, second how can you adjust the. Uh, we have to change. 4.5 to uh, every, 5. Every, every time when we make the, the, the attention of the patient, we make the test. Yes. When it's too dry, when it's over it's, uh, three or. 3.5, we have to make a little bit alkalinized. We use this protocol, like I told you before, and next, in the next third day, we test it and come a little bit up. Yes. When it's over seven, we have to change going down. We, 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 we wash with uh, soap, with uh, sulfur soap, and we, use, uh, we clean with alcohol and isodine and make compression. And the next time they come in to visit, we, 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 we control and it's coming down. So we, we have two tools to make a little bit alkaline so and we have to make a little bit acid. Did you uh, do a study comparing a group without, without BH and a group with BH and uh, you have results? 
Yes, there are many, many studies. We have uh, publications in uh, different uh, magazines. And uh, with this uh, uh, protocol, we present three years ago in Japan. And we have a publication with uh, 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 studies compared with Dr. Takahiro Imai and in my group in, in Mexico and in Bolivia and make compare the uh, the groups. Yes, we have publications. Thank so, uh, uh, Doctor, uh, thank you very much. Uh, you have a lot of questions to be asked. Uh, and uh, the chairman of the uh, of the conference uh, is giving me notice that uh, we are running out of time. So I'm so sorry, we have to stop here. And uh, of course, we can ask you uh, uh, after the session. It is, you, it's, uh, it's very easy to ask them. Let's ask him after the session. So we move forwards right now and uh